Imagine walking through a forest where the tallest trees swayed gently in the breeze, and suddenly a shadow eclipses the sun. You look up and keep looking up until you see something so massive, so towering, it seems almost unnatural. But it's not a skyscraper. It's not a mountain. It's a living, breathing creature, Sauro Poseidon, the tallest dinosaur ever discovered, with an estimated height exceeding 60 feet and a neck over 40 feet long. Taller than a six-story building, heavier than 12 elephants, and longer than a city bus, Sauro Poseidon dwarfs even the grandest animals alive today. Discovered in the 1990s in Oklahoma, its remains were so large and oddly shaped that the first fossil vertebrae were mistaken for petrified tree trunks. It wasn't until paleontologists examined them more closely that they realized what they had unearthed, massive air-filled bones from the neck of a dinosaur like no other. These bones, over four feet long each, were filled with intricate air sac systems that lightened the skeleton while maintaining strength. This design, more advanced than many machines, allowed Sauro Poseidon to lift its head to the treetops with ease. Its name means Earthquake God Lizard, an appropriate title for a creature whose footsteps likely shook the ground. But despite its size, Sauro Poseidon was no monster. It was a peaceful herbivore, feeding high above the competition. It shaped its world not by terror, but by towering over it a living monument of evolution. It pushes us to ask, how did something so impossibly large ever exist? In 94, deep in the Antlers Formation of southeastern Oklahoma, a team of paleontologists stumbled upon four massive bones embedded in ancient rock. At first, they believed they had uncovered fossilized tree trunks, so great was the size and unusual texture of the remains. But closer inspection revealed otherwise these were not trees, but vertebrae. And not just any vertebrae, they were among the largest neck bones ever found. Each vertebra stretched over four feet long, yet was remarkably light for its size. This was due to a network of air sacs running through the bone, a biological adaptation similar to those found in birds today. These air spaces part of an intricate respiratory system, made the bones strong yet lightweight. This design enabled Sauro Poseidon to grow its neck without collapsing under the burden of its own mass. At the time, it was a revelation. Brachiosaurus and Argentinosaurus were widely regarded as the record holders for height and size. But now, here was a new contender, one that reached even higher. The bones were later transferred to the Sam Noble Oklahoma Museum of Natural History, where they sparked global excitement and a wave of research that would forever change sauropod science. This find also highlighted the power of reanalysis in paleontology. Sometimes, the most groundbreaking discoveries aren't found in the field, but in drawers, fossils overlooked, mislabeled, or misunderstood. Sauro Poseidon was proof that there's still much to learn, even from fossils long collected. Creating a creature like Sauro Poseidon wasn't just a matter of size. It was a masterclass in biological design. The vertebrae in its neck were not only massive, but also hollowed by a series of internal chambers, reducing weight without sacrificing strength. These chambers acted like the trusses of a bridge, distributing forces along the spine and enabling the neck to lift vertically. Its front legs were longer than its back legs, giving the body a forward slope perfect for browsing high foliage. The long, counterbalancing tail provided stability, much like a suspension cable on a crane. Its feet were wide, padded, and column-like, spreading the creature's immense weight over a large area to avoid sinking into soft ground. Internally, Sauro Poseidon had to solve another challenge, how to pump blood to a brain more than 30 feet above the heart. Scientists theorize it had an enormous heart, possibly weighing over 400 pounds. 
along with specialized valves in its arteries to prevent blood from flowing backward. In many ways, its circulatory system may have resembled that of a giraffe only scaled up massively. Modern science now allows us to simulate these systems digitally. CT scans and biomechanical models recreate Sauro Poseidon's movements and physiology with increasing accuracy. We can now test how its tendons worked in tandem with massive muscle groups, offering insight into the stresses its spine endured. These simulations help us understand what such a large animal could do and what limits biology had to work around. With each breakthrough, we marvel at how nature engineered something so impossibly elegant and enormous. To understand how a dinosaur of such scale could survive, we must step into its world. The early Cretaceous period, 110 million years ago, was warm, wet, and rich with vegetation. North America was a different place, low-lying coastal plains, vast river systems, and lush forests covered the land. Conifers towered over ferns, horsetails, and cicads. The earliest flowering plants began to spread, and insects buzzed through the dense canopy. In this green abundance, Sora Poseidon found its niche feeding on leaves far beyond the reach of any competitor. Its towering neck allowed it to move from tree to tree, harvesting greenery with minimal effort. Predators like Acrocanthosaurus prowled the land, but few would dare challenge a full-grown Sauro Poseidon. Young ones were more vulnerable and may have traveled in groups for protection. Fossil evidence suggests sauropods likely moved in herds, and Sauro Poseidon was probably no exception. As it roamed, this giant would have changed the landscape. Its footsteps left deep impressions. Its droppings fertilized the soil. It may even have helped control forest height by pruning the tallest trees. In this way, it wasn't just part of its ecosystem, it shaped it, leaving a legacy written in the land itself. For all its grandeur, Sora Poseidon began life small. Its eggs were probably no larger than a volleyball. Hatchlings were tiny compared to their future size, but within just a few years, they would undergo explosive growth. Fossil evidence from related sauropods shows that they could grow thousands of pounds annually. This would have required non-stop feeding and an incredibly efficient digestive system. Their guts likely functioned like massive fermentation chambers, slowly breaking down tough plant matter with the help of microbes. Juvenile sauroposidans likely stuck together for safety, much like elephant calves today. Over time, the strongest would grow tall enough to be virtually untouchable. As they matured, their social behavior may have changed. Some might have formed loose groups, while others became solitary browsers, quietly dominating their territory. And they didn't just grow in size. They grew in influence. A full-grown Sauro Poseidon wasn't merely a survivor, it was a keystone presence. Every tree it ate, every trail it made, reshaped its environment. Its journey from a tiny egg to a skyscraping colossus mirrors evolution's power to turn the simplest forms into the most magnificent creatures the world has ever known, despite its grandeur. Sauro Poseidon's fossil record remains limited. Scientists have discovered only a few neck vertebrae, and much of the dinosaur's body is reconstructed based on close relatives. Still, even fragments reveal astonishing information. Paleontologists study these bones with CT scans and digital modeling to infer posture, weight distribution, and locomotion. From such tools, a partial skeleton transforms into a vivid, moving animal. New techniques, like finite element analysis, allow scientists to test how Sauro Poseidon's neck might have flexed or how much pressure its feet endured. Advances in acoustic modeling even let us guess how it may have sounded, perhaps deep, resonant bellows that echoed across the plains. This incomplete fossil record also fuels the imagination. 
What did Sorrow Poseidon truly look like? How did it sound? What were its daily behaviors? Every new bone adds a brush stroke to the portrait. Some researchers even believe more complete skeletons are out there, waiting in unexplored rock layers. Some paleontologists propose that Sauro Poseidon may have had display features like colorful skin patterns or neck crests, used for mating or species recognition traits that don't fossilize but leave hints in bone texture and comparison with modern animals. The beauty of paleontology is that it's never finished. Every year, discoveries revise what we thought we knew, and creatures like Sauro Poseidon remind us that Earth's greatest wonders are sometimes still half-buried and fully humbling. Gigantism isn't random. For Sauro Poseidon, towering height offered unmatched access to food, visibility for detecting danger, and size as a defense. Larger animals also tend to live longer and reproduce more, giving their lineage evolutionary stability. But there's more. A big body regulates temperature better, stores energy during scarcity, and shapes the ecosystem in unique ways. However, it also comes with trade-offs. Large animals need fast space and resources. They're slower to mature and more vulnerable to environmental collapse. Sauro Poseidon lived in a time of relative stability, but had the climate changed suddenly, or food supplies dwindled, even giants like it would be at risk. Being the biggest is impressive, but it's also fragile. Still, while it lasted, Sauro Poseidon was the pinnacle of terrestrial evolution. It wasn't an accident. It was the answer to an ecological riddle that nature solved brilliantly. Could we ever bring Sauro Poseidon back? The idea fascinates both scientists and storytellers. But in reality, dinosaur DNA doesn't survive the passage of tens of millions of years. Without it, cloning is impossible. What we have are bones, impressions, and the ever-growing toolkit of reconstruction. Yet, this might be more powerful than resurrection. Through life-sized models, 3D animation, and museum exhibits, we connect with Sauro Poseidon in visceral ways. Children gaze up at reconstructed skeletons in awe. Researchers test movement with robotic limbs. Artists paint lush scenes of the ancient past. And now, with digital tools, we simulate its breath, its steps, its sight lines, in virtual reality, one can walk beside a full-scale Sauro Poseidon, feel the vibration of its step, or hear a speculative call echoing in the forest. For older generations, these experiences rekindle childhood fascination, now grounded in science. Public interest in such reconstructions isn't just entertainment. It also drives funding for real scientific exploration, making it possible for new digs and better technology. In this way, Sauro Poseidon lives not as a beast in a lab, but as a presence in our shared imagination. To those over 40, the story of Sauro Poseidon resonates beyond science. It speaks to memory, to watching ideas evolve across decades. As children, we dreamed of thunder lizards. As adults, we learned their lives were more intricate than we imagined. Sauro Poseidon is a reminder that endurance matters. It didn't chase, it didn't roar, it simply lived tall, slow, steady, in a world obsessed with speed and noise. There's wisdom in that. Nature celebrates quiet strength as much as loud survival. Its bones remind us that fragility and greatness can coexist, that life's most powerful chapters sometimes pass without a sound, and that we, like this gentle titan, are shaped by the world we walk and shape it in return. Sorrow Poseidon left no written word, but its story is etched in stone. It lived in a time before continents took their current form, before mammals rose, before humans walked upright. And yet it leaves a mark on our minds, generations later. 
Its legacy is not only about scale. It's about adaptation, engineering, resilience, and awe. It challenges us to look up and think deeper.